Okay, in the last video, we located the image in a flat or plane mirror, P-L-A-N-E mirror. And now we're going to deal with curved mirrors. Okay, so first of all, we have to find some terms. We have a focal point where the light rays, when they bounce off of the mirror, come together. We have the principal axis, which is along the middle of the mirror. So if you had the curve of the mirror and you drew a line straight through the middle of it, that would be the principal axis. So if we have a concave mirror, we call it that because light comes in this way and it's caved in towards the light. If you see that, it's caved in, so it's a concave mirror. It has a focal point, and that's where all the light rays, if they bounced off, they would bounce off as if they went through that focal point, so they'd be all focused in that spot. We also have a center of curvature because we're assuming that these are spherical mirrors, so the center of, cur center of curvature is kind of like the radius. And then we have the principal axis, our line through the middle. So a concave mirror bends towards where the light is going. And here's the picture of how a concave mirror reflects light. Parallel light rays come in, and then they bounce off through the focal point. Okay, still the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. It's just our normal is coming out this way now. It's, parallel, it's perpendicular to a line tangent to the curve. We, we'll deal with that later. It's, it's a small importance thing. Okay, a convex mirror makes light rays spread out. Okay, so the light rays come in and they bounce off this way. And then they bounce off this way, but if you followed them back and traced them all back, they would appear to meet inside the mirror. So there's your focal point. So how do we locate an image? There are four rays we draw. You only have to draw two. Three and four extra credit. Yay, our favorite words. No matter which rays we draw, they will all converge in the same place. So the easiest one to draw goes from the top of the object through the center of curvature and reflects on itself. So the, here's our object. Our object's a little heart today. And it's going to go from the top of the object and it's going to go through the center of curvature. And it turns out it's really coming in right on the normal because here's our line tangent and here would be our normal. So if it goes in on the normal, it comes out on the normal. So it's going to bounce back on itself. So from the top of the object through the center of curvature, notice that there are arrowheads on both ends of that. The second ray, you want to say, goes in parallel. So we're still start, starting at the top of the object. All of our rays are going to start at the top of the object. We're going to go in parallel to the principal axis. So see these distances are the same. And out through the focal point. In parallel out through the focal point. Notice the arrowhead drawn on our arrows. So we already know where our image is. Where those two rays crossed, where those two rays crossed, that's where our image is. Okay, that's since those rays came from the top of our object, they are the top of our object. So they form this part of the heart right here. They form that part of the heart right there. And then we just kind of fill in the rest of it from there. Okay, so our extra credit rays. Our extra credit ray, this one goes from the top of the object through the focal point and out parallel. So the other one went in parallel out through the focal point. This one goes in through the focal point and out parallel. And it should still meet up in the same place that the other two did. We kind of lost our other two rays, but the one went from the top of the object. Let's see if I can do this straight through the center of curvature, in and out. And then we had one that went in parallel out through the focal point. Hey, that's pretty good. All three of them meet 
right there, and that would be the top of our object. All right, the fourth ray. The fourth ray follows the law of reflection. Okay, we're going to go in through the vertex. So the vertex is that peak of the curve here. So it's the peak of our curve, so it's right here. You're going to go in through the vertex, and now you actually have to use your protractor. You have to measure those two angles, and your angle of incidence is going to equal your angle of reflection, but it will still meet up with the other three rays. And so all together, this is what it looks like, and now you have no idea what you did. So one of the things I do is I do color code my um, rays so that I can see which what they are. But here's, so notice the black one, in and out through C, in parallel, out through the focal point, in through the focal point, out parallel, in through the vertex, our angle of incidence equals our angle of reflection. In order to get the credit on the test, you need to actually measure those angles. So in order to get the extra credit, you have to measure those angles and show me, hey, look, I measured them, and they're equal. So in through the vertex, angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and look, they all meet up in that spot. And that's where your image is. So how would we describe this image? It's inverted. You can see it's upside down. Um, you know to draw it inverted because they met up below the principal axis. You have a new message from Kathy Shelley. It's reduced because it's small, obviously smaller than what it started with. It's a real image. And this is the one we saw in class. We're going to use a curved mirror and we're going to project this onto a screen. But the way you can tell just by looking at this is see all these light rays? They're real light rays. They really bounced off, so it's a real image. And if I stuck a screen right there, you would see an actual projection. And how do you think that projection would look? You're right. It'd be upside down. We're going to see that in class. Or we saw it in class. One of those two. Is it always this easy? No, because this is a concave mirror. Notice it's concave. But the difference between what we have now and what we had before is our object is inside the focal point. So here's our focal point, here's our center of curvature, and our object is inside the focal point. So, But we still draw the same rays. In and out through C. So in and out through C. In parallel, out through the focal point. Now do you see these two rays here are never, ever, ever, ever not going to meet. So what we do is we bring them back and see they're dotted. Anything inside the mirror is dotted. So they're dotted and then they will meet up back here. And this is actually what a makeup mirror does. Here's our image. If you look in a makeup mirror, you're always magnified. It's because you're inside the focal point. You put your face right here inside the focal point and it gives you a magnified image. So our image is upright because it met up above the principal axis. It's magnified like we were talking about. It's a virtual image because just like with the plain flat mirror, it's inside the mirror. You can't project it onto a screen. It's made out of fake rays. It's a virtual image. So what about the extra rays? How do we do those? Okay, so it's going to go. You have to start at the focal point. In through the focal point, you want to hit that same starting spot. In through the focal point, out parallel. Again, those three rays are never going to meet up. So you dot that one back and see it's going to meet up with the other two. Now you know why it's extra credit. It gets really tricky here. And then the other one, you make it go in through the vertex. So you're going to line up the top with the vertex and you're going to draw a line. And your angle of incidence is going to equal your angle of reflection. And again, none of those rays meet up. So you bring it back, and they should all, they'll meet up close. It's, it may not be perfect, especially the first few times you do it. But they'll meet up all in about the same spot, and that's the top of your image. So here's our four rays. This is what you want to write down. Write down your four rays, and you might want to col color code them. And you might want to always use the same colors. That way you never you know which rays you're talking about. So you're going to go in and out through C, 
in parallel, out through the focal point, in through the focal point, out parallel, in through the vertex, your angle of incidence equals your angle of reflection. So pause this video right now so that you can write down these four, video, four rays. These two here, these two here are going to be really important because these are the ones that are going to also be used when we do lenses next. Okay, so now we have a convex mirror. Okay, it's convex because it's not caved in. Okay, so it's pointing out. And so we still draw the same four rays, but remember our focal point is inside the mirror. And so our center of curvature is, so your curve of your mirror always points towards your focal point and your center of curvature. And this distance and this distance, the center of curvature is always twice your focal point. So this distance here and this distance here are actually the same. So you're going to go in and out through C. But notice I didn't bring it solid back here because it doesn't actually go through the mirror. In parallel, out through the focal point. So these rays are never going to meet up. You see that? So you bring both of them back. And here's your little, little tiny image. Little, little tiny image. This is objects in the mirror may be smaller, closer than they appear because they squish down. This is the kind of mirror you have in your rearview mirrors. All right. So how would we describe this image? This got messed up. Okay, how would we describe it? We would describe it, it's in the mirror. So is it real or virtual? It's virtual, good. Is it magnified or reduced? It's reduced because it's smaller. And it's upright because it met up on top of the principal axis. If it's inverted, it's going to meet up down here below the principal axis. And it's going to be on this side. That's just a little hint. Okay, the other rays are, it, it gets really crowded in here. You're going to go in through the focal point, but the light ray is not actually going to go through, so you have to stop when you get to the mirror. Go, Just line up, take your ruler. Okay, let's pretend that this is a ruler. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so pretend this line is a ruler. You want to line up the top of your object with your focal point, like that. But when you draw the line, you're going to line it up, and then you're going to stop when you get the mirror. And then you're going to make it bounce out parallel to the principal axis. So that's, you see how it's getting really crowded in there? But they still meet up all in the same spot, so they're still meeting up right there. And then our, this one's easier, this one's not as confusing. Okay, it's going to go in through the vertex, so in through the vertex, angle of incidence is going to equal your angle of reflection, and you're going to bring back that reflected ray. Remember, you only bring back the reflected rays, and it should meet up right there with all the others. And this is the mess it looks like when it's all together. So it's kind of hard to have your drawing and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. What's more important is that you know what the four rays are and you know the process because there's no way you can memorize this. All right, so if you're going to draw your own setup, because you can do this. This is something you can practice till the cows come home. You're going to use your protractor to make a mirror because your mirrors are spheres and your protractor is a half circle. Make a mark at the 90 degree mark, so at the normal spot, and at the point where you're going to line up your protractor. So remember when we had our little protractor. Okay, we're going to make a mark at the 90 up here. We're going to make a mark here. And then we're going to make another mark at the spot where we lined it up, which is down here. So that's where you're going to make your two marks, one here and one here. And then draw along the edge of your protractor to make your thing. And when you line these guys up, see your protractor will actually be turned this way. 
your protractor will actually be this way. So when you draw these two together, you've drawn your principal axis. Your principal axis is here. Here's your curved mirror. You can flip the protractor around and make a convex mirror. Okay? And then that this is going to be your center of curvature. This is your center of curvature because if you look, it's the radius of that circle. So there's your center of curvature and your focal point is going to be halfway between here and here. So your focal point is going to be in there. Okay? So that's how you can draw your own setup. And here's kind of what it would look like. So, see I've got my my protractor here. I'm making a convex mirror or a concave mirror, sorry. Here's my center of curvature. I measured this distance here, and there's my focal point, there's my vertex, and I drew along the side here, and then I can just stick my object anywhere I want. I can stick it here, 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 I can flip the protractor around and make a different kind of thing. So, all these ray diagrams, guys, this is something that nobody should miss on the test. This is something you can practice till the cows come home, alright? So go get that A. Love you. Bye.